Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Here we are with an MPU board from a Bolly Williams WPC game. In this case, uh, Twilight Zone. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a remote battery pack. One of the most common problems with all pinball machines is damage to the main processing unit from batteries that are mounted on the board that over time leak this electrolyte which gets in here and just erodes away at the traces. It just gets sucked up onto the circuit board um, and follows all of the paths and goes into the components and starts to destroy them and corrode everything. So it's always a good idea to get those batteries off of the board and some of the later models had like little daughter boards with the batteries on them so that they, they, they didn't necessarily damage the board. But most pinball machines, almost solid state machines, have batteries in them. And in some cases, their batteries, like in the old Bali machines, they're soldered directly to the board. You actually have to cut them off. Uh, at least these have uh, battery holders, but it's still a problem. And I don't know if you can see, if you look closely here, but I've got some corrosion on, on this. See, see the green? right there that's from that's from some batteries leaking it's not the not the ones that I had but when I got the game this was an issue so what we want to do is we want to get some vinegar and we want to neutralize the board first so we'll take some vinegar and we'll dip a q-tip in it and we want to kind of carefully go over all these areas and just try to neutralize any any electrolyte that's left make sure that it doesn't get onto the board and mess things up so you go over that really carefully on some other boards you might actually get some sandpaper and actually clean the board off very carefully. I've already cleaned this board quite a bit, but it looks like I missed some spots here. So I'm going to just go over this a bit, make sure that I neutralize all of that electrolyte so that it doesn't come back and, and damage the board. Now, you can get these little battery packs they're cheap like anywhere from like 50 75 cents and uh, I get some, an extra string of wire in this case I have the wire is the same color so I've taken a little sharpie and I've marked little black bands so that I can tell the negative from the positive at the other end I've got some heat shrink tubing you can pick up a little cheapy box of uh, heat shrink tubing at uh, Harbor Freight and uh, I'm going to add longer leads onto this battery holder. Now, I want to point out something. Depending upon what game that you're working on, you may want to add a diode in here. And the reason for that is uh, some games use rechargeable batteries and some games don't. In the case of these WPC games, they're not using rechargeable batteries. So they're not, there's a diode already on the board here that blocks the voltage from coming back up and recharging the batteries. Um, for other games that use rechargeable batteries, you put a diode in the series of the lead, the line and it will uh, keep the, the batteries from charging. And you definitely want that because if it's sending voltage back to the batteries and you've got alkalines in there, you can make those things explode and really mess up your game. So you definitely want to address that issue. Here's one that I've put together where I've got a diode in, in line. And it doesn't, it, you know, you can put it in even with ones that do have it, but it'll cause a little slight voltage drop and make the batteries not last as long. So, in this case, I'm going to just solder these two wires together the way they are because there is already a diode on the WPC board. So, let's get this done.
that. Too much junk up here on my workbench. Talk amongst yourselves. Here, I will give you a topic. All right. Sorry. Here we go. All righty. I'm going to put a little tiny piece of tape over one lead and then the, sh the shrink, the heat shrink tubing over the other. I probably should have put one on one. Actually, I can. I can still do this. So this is what I'll do. I'll put some tubing over one, and then tubing over both of them, like that. Now I'm going to do a uh, lighter. So we'll shrink up this tubing. Insulate that. And then push this guy over these two. Make sure I get the end a little bit more. Shrink up. Okay. Get everything lined up. Okay, I've got a little trailing nib here I need to trim off. Maybe I should use a bigger piece of tubing. See, if I was editing my video, this would just be completely slick. It would, it would work right the first time and it, I'd look a lot more professional. I wouldn't actually get a piece of heat shrink tubing stuck on the wires while I'm showing you. I would, I would look a little bit more professional. So now I'm just going to rig it. So there we go. And uh, All right, so we've got our we've got our battery holder connected up. Now we have to figure out where the where to connect it onto the board. I'm not going to take this holder off. I'm going to leave it there just for legacy purposes, and I'm going to just solder this onto there. First, we need to strip some of the insulation off. Make sure we know which is negative and which is positive. Okay, so we look, and if you look on here, one of the things about these things is they, they don't always mark positive and negative, believe it or not. It's kind of annoying. But if you know that the battery holders, the batteries are pointed this way up, so the positives are up here and the negatives are down here, and you look at the back, you'll see I've actually marked it with a Sharpie, positive and negative. So those are our two connections. So I will take my negative. And I'll put a little bit of solder on the actual wiring, tune it up. Okay. So here's our positive to positive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a big dollop of solder there on the positive terminal, like that. Get that nice and molten, and then let's see. 
I want to think which way I want the wires oriented when the board is hanging. So the board hangs like like this. So I want them coming off this side. So I'm going to orient it this way. And I'm actually going to trim this a little bit. It's a little too long. So I'm going to trim. I don't want any And I don't want it to short and touch anything else. So there we go. Like that. Maybe just a little bit more solder. Voila. Okay, so there's our positive. Now let's do the negative. Which is going to be right over here. Same situation. Put a little more solder on here. I'm gonna once again. I'm gonna trim this. I made it a little bit too long. Verify that is the negative lead. And there we go. So these are on. We've got a remote battery pack mounted in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust out the continuity tester and I'm going to check to make sure because there's a couple of traces next to this negative thing and I want to make sure that it's not shorted to the negative just in case. Better to be safe than sorry you don't want to turn this on and then be sending voltage down some pin that uh, you shouldn't. So since I've got this wire being soldered and crosses a couple of traces I just want to make sure everything is secure. So there we have it. There is your remote battery holder. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, tune in to pinballhelp.com, leave comments on the blog, let me know what you think, and I uh, hope I'm providing some useful information. Thanks for watching.